Whether you are a professional photographer or a beginner, you must have heard of the term ISO. A good understanding of ISO is vital for capturing high quality images. There are situations when you might want to raise your ISO, while in other circumstances, you might want to lower it. Thinking about how to use ISO effectively? In this video, we will talk about all the basics of ISO and how you can use it to improve your creative shooting. So with that further ado, let's jump in. There are pillars of photography that help you get the correct exposure, the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. Among the three factors, ISO plays a major for setting the proper exposure. Besides, it is also the easiest to understand and use in your photography. Simply put, ISO is a feature that lets you either brighten or darken an image. In a darker environment, you might want to increase the exposure of your image. You can do it in many ways using shutter speed and aperture. However, increasing the ISO may result in noise which might lower the quality of your images. Then again, images also look sloppy if you shot in low light situations without raising ISO. So the bottom line is, you have to come to a zone of fit where you increase the ISO to an amount that doesn't visibly hamper the image quality. As for me, I am more into product photography, though I mostly shoot indoors where I don't have much light. However, as I use an artificial lighting setup in my studio, I can keep my ISO to a lower number. Again, if you are looking for the best lighting solution for product photography, click the I button on the screen. See if you are also shooting in low light situations like me. You can get some affordable lights to maintain the base ISO. It is the lowest value of the native ISO of your camera. Most of the DSLRs and mirrorless cameras nowadays feature a base ISO of 100. If you are thinking of how and why base ISO is important for your photography, well, it lets you click the highest quality images your camera is capable of capturing. So the rule of thumb is, you should choose the base ISO whenever you get a chance. However, it is not always possible in low-light environments. Theoretically, ISO helps to brighten the image, so if the environment is well lit, you can choose an ISO number as low as 100 or 200. Even in a poorly lit environment, you can still keep the ISO to a lower number if the subject you are going to shoot is not moving. For example, in some of my commercial product photography where I can use artificial lighting for some reason, I usually have my camera mounted on a tripod and set a long shutter speed so that enough amount of light can enter the camera sensor. And this is how I achieve crisp and sharp images while maintaining lower ISO even in low light situations. But keep in mind that if you set a longer shutter speed, anything that is moving in the frame will be shown as a blurred object in the final image. Though higher ISO usually introduces grain in your image, there are certain situations when you need to use the higher ISO. For example, when you are shooting a very fast-paced scenario, like in sports or a flying bird, you need a very fast shutter speed, meaning you are letting a trivial amount of light enter into the sensor. In these situations, a higher ISO is usually preferred to get the right amount of exposure. So that was all about ISO. I hope you now have a better understanding of ISO and a clear concept of using it effectively. If you think you know another useful tip about ISO, let us know in the comment section.